It's time now for The Clash. And not content with censoring references to Christmas, the woke mob now want to drop the curtains on pantomimes too. An all-white production of Aladdin in Liverpool with lyrics encouraging audience members to, quote, come down to our Orient town has been branded utter racism by leading panto actor Benjamin Armstrong. His comments prompted the Race and Equality Committee of Actors Union Equity to condemn the production, which features Coronation Street star uh, Connor McIntyre. Remember, he played... Uh, Pat Phelan, and call for an industry-wide conference on the issues. So there you have it. The left in this country now believe the great British tradition of pantomime is an offensive relic, but I say, oh, no, it isn't. But what do you reckon? Are pantos a great British tradition or offensive relics? Down at GBNews.uk, vote in our poll at GB News. But we've got some legends to help you make up your mind tonight. I mean, he's the most famous panto dame in the country. He has just <laughs> come off stage. Christopher Biggins, what a legend. Uh, currently starring, by the way, in the adventures of uh, Peter Pan Peter at the Pan. Darlington Hippodrome. And from small screen to stage, it's Apprentice star Amy Anzal. She's turning out in the Sand Centre's production of Aladdin in Carlisle and completing our panto posse. It's the queen of clean, Kim Woodburn. She's a panto veteran, too, who took to the stage, I can't believe this, as the evil queen in Cinderella. You would have found that hard, Kim. Uh, but look, Christopher, goodness gracious me, this is ridiculous. They're coming for our pantos. I mean, I just don't know what's going on. I mean, I'm, uh, I've been doing pantomime. In, start, funny enough, I started in Darlington, where I'm appearing now. 46 years ago, I did my first pantomime dame. And it's been a wonderful, wonderful career as the day. But I, I'm getting fed up now with every, everybody sort of claiming this is wrong, this is right. What is going on? We are enjoying ourselves. We are playing to packed houses. We are having the whale of a time up here. The audience, we've just done two shows today. I've just left the stage. They adored it. And we are having fun. Let us not forget that we must have fun. Yes. Pantomime is an extraordinary. Uh, it is. It is. Yes, and they're on. coming for it. But Amy Anzal, even though you're starring in Panto and actually you're in Aladdin, you're really horrified about this all white production of Aladdin. What, why? Why does it matter? We're a predominantly white country. And, you know, what, what's your problem? Well, my problem is that I think, OK, Panto is a great British tradition and I'm a part of it right now and I'm very, very proud to be a part of it. But it needs to also represent society and society is changing. It's inclusive and it's diverse. And I do think Panto cast need to represent that. We have a cast that has several mixed race actors. And I think being usually one of the first things a child sees on stage, they need to see a diverse society in the form of the cast in Panto. And it's very easy to cast people of different diversities. And I don't understand why that particular production company couldn't find at least one actor of color or a mixed race actor to be a part of that cast. It's just, it's ridiculous. Kim Woodburn, this just feels to me like the woke mob trying to run pantos out of business. It is the rope, Mark. They know if I, I shoot a lot of them, dear, stupid, stupid troublemaking people. And the young lady that's playing in panto, I'm disappointed you speak like this. Panto is a British institution. It's fun, it's not politically correct. Uh, men are dressed as women and they look so comical, we couldn't do it better. A widow twanky and, and oh and honestly and, and and all the I love the ugly sisters. Ag and I did a pantomime once and we were badly cast. We were cast as the ugly sisters. Oh Women god, that is against type. We never made a shuffle job of that pantomime. <laughs> you want two men with hairy legs and huge feet and exaggerated just like figures and pushing the old bosom up. Oh, you know. You know it's a man taking it, but it is lovely. Kids laugh at it. Why would we change it now? I'm so. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying to well, change you, any of that. Keep that all in. I didn't say that. I said no, all of that is great. All I say is you have to adapt it to today's society and the diverse nature of society and have inclusive casting. Know, but Amy, That's have it. you not Everything thought? Amy, have it's you not tried? Tried. I mean, You're talking utter. Tripe. 
And if you're in with the woke brigade... I'm agreeing with you, Kim. I'm agreeing with almost everything you just said. How can I be right? You won't get one over on me. I live in America for 11 years. You're all big gobs. So shut up. I love Biggins. I love what Biggins does. He entertains. He's wonderful. You can't do it forever. We had Roy Barrett. We, we had, my darling, Norman Evans over the garden wall. You, girl, you've never heard of him. We had Dick Emery as Mandy. Could you want a more amusing sight than his, his, his big fat legs and his bosoms? And we roared. We women couldn't do it. Totally. You have to see totally. that. And, and I have to say, I have to say... We had um, Les Dawson, sissy no, and aid in the laundry. I know, there's been Was legends. But, mom. Kim... Kim, you, you know the legend no. of them all, Kim. You know the legend of them all. The biggest panto legend of them all is Christopher Biggins. And Biggins, I genuinely think there will be a day soon when you get the Woketopians coming to say, oh, it's politically incorrect to have a panto dame. Oh, I, I agree. I think that day could be very, very near. And if it does come, I'm out. I'm finished because that would be appalling. I mean, I've seen in my lifetime as a day, which I told you is a long time, I've seen principal boys. And because in my early days, there were women who slapped their thighs and said 12 o'clock and still no sign of dick. And those were halcyon days. Now, and I understand this, that producers want to have boys, men. They want a hero for the other boys in the audience to look up to. That is fine. But there will come the day when they will say, no, no, we, a, a dame must be a woman. When that day comes, I'm out. I've had my time. I really enjoyed it, yeah. but not for me. It's finished. Kim? Because seeing you, this big man, all these big men with their bosoms and all this over, we love them. We roar. When they come on stage, Biggie comes on stage, the kids, oh, ha, ha, ha. they're going to do it with a woman? Don't be silly. And Amy Ansel, that. isn't that the problem, Amy? When you start giving in to this woke mob who say every single pantomime in the country has to have some sort of particular diversity quota, you're starting to take away the fun and the joy, aren't you? Let's just let the best people, the most entertaining people do the job. I think that's possible, and yet also you can be inclusive about it. I think there is an essence to British pantomime, and they're never going to take that away. But I do think you can adapt slightly by having inclusive cast, okay. like we had Kim, in our production of Aladdin. I think Kim and wants to ask you a question. Is that right? In your panto, how many Chinese cast do you have, my love? <laughs> we have uh, well, two mixed want... race. How many I'm Chinese? Not saying you have to tick every box and have a person of oh, color, yes, a yes, person that's yes, Chinese, a person. Yes, I'm saying you have to, to have a pass, general diverse cast in whatever way Chinese. that's going to be. But you're willing to have them English people, but when it suits you, you go all woke. Oh, get off, you silly girl. Not part of the woke brigade. I am best. simply saying we have well, to adapt to, to today's the society, society, which is more diverse than it was 50 years ago. You're willing to do that to you for your money, aren't you? You're so two faced. <laughs> I feel oh, like I'm living in a panto right now, big girl. Exactly. I couldn't be more, Dan. We're being confronted by the ugly sisters. Don't talk tripe. <laughs> Don't be so two-faced, you silly girl. Kim Woodburn. Listen, I think you're I both terrific and you both have statements to make. But uh, next, he's pantomime. Yeah. This, this is brilliant pantomime. This is brilliant pantomime. I love you both. I love you both. I love you both. I love you both. And I'm going to say, break a leg to all three of you. Have a brilliant question. Uh, brilliant Christmas. Our best ever pantomime dame is Christopher Biggins, uh, without any oh, doubt. Darling, Merry Christmas without to any you doubt. all. I love Merry you. Christmas. I'll speak to you next year. Thank you to Amy Ansel from Carlisle and, as ever, Kim Woodburn from Cheshire. <laughs>